Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today's video is a little different than normal. I got a new toy. I have a GoPro camera and a handlebar attachment, which means I am now gonna start doing a few long arm quilting videos for you guys, which whenever I have one that needs to be quilted, which is usually at least once a month. And I'm just going to film them. And normally I'm gonna talk you through it as I'm doing it the way I do with our regular videos. But uh, it was kind of a weird situation when I was doing this and I just didn't have a ton of time to do it the first time around and so I just needed to get the quilt done so we're doing a little different for the first one. Um, we, I use a stencil interlocking El Dorado. This is a all-time favorite of mine. It is from Foline Stencil and I have a video showing you how to do it on your home sewing machine as well. This is one where I tried and tried and tried to do feathers and could never ever do it and w the first time I tried with this stencil I had success and I think it's for two Two reasons. One, I have a line to follow and that is so key. And two, um, it's really kind of like feather light. Uh, you can do a few feathers and then you get a break and you get to do a swirl, which is much easier to master. And then you do a few more feathers and then you do another swirl. And so it just is, and it's not like super fancy feathers, they're very whimsical. So if they're not super uniform, it's not the end of the world. As long as they're nice and a nice smooth curve, you're good to go. Um, so I'm gonna talk you through the differences between doing this on your home sewing machine versus a long arm. The biggest difference is you cannot mark your whole quilt before you put it on the long arm frame because that chalk is just gonna come off as you roll the quilt up. So what I do instead to get around that is I have this underbed storage box that I just bought at Target, super easy to source that and get it. And I just put that underneath and sort of put it up on the table that is underneath the long arm. And then I loosen up the quilt on the top enough so that it can lay nice and flat on top of the box. And then I use that as my hard surface. So that way when I'm swiping that pounds pad over, it works really well. So for those of you who have never seen me fill a pounds pad, we'll insert some video here so you can see how to do it. But essentially what you're going to do is you're going to um, unplug the, the plug part. It's like a bank stopper from when you were a kid. You're going to fill it all the way up to the top with chalk powder. And then you replace that stopper and you're going to bang it with the plastic part on 50 times. I mean, really smash that sucker um, like you are ticked at somebody and you're getting some aggression out and so you're gonna do that 50 times and then if it's the first time you're doing it you're going to do that again if you're just refilling because you ran out of chalk um, and you used everything that was in there you can just do it the one time and then then you, when you flip it over the pad should be really saturated with chalk it should be at whatever color it is that you're using you should see it very clearly through there the biggest problem people have with this if they say it doesn't work it's because you didn't prime it properly now the second problem people have is because it's a pile of pounds pad people just want to take and pounce it that's not true you want to swipe it across so what I do with it on the long arm is once I have it laid down flat on that uh, underbed storage container I just put my hand down just like I would if I were marking it on my sewing table to hold that steady and then I slide it across and I do it a couple of times and I am way more likely to have double vision sewing lines when I'm marking on the long arm than I am when I'm marking at home. Um, just because you know there's some movement there it's not the super flat thing on your table but it's not the end of the world if you get a little bit of double vision lines you can totally work with that all right after that you're going to want to make sure that you're using those registration marks to line up your stencil to make sure that it is in line where it should be as you're working across so you're going to mark one entire pass at a time and then once you're done with that you're going to go ahead and you're just going to follow those lines with your long arm and one thing I found that be really helpful is to always have a pink and a blue chalk on hand because depending on the lighting situation and depending on the fabric and the background, either one is gonna look and be able to see better. So sometimes I found like I can quilt in the day really well and I can see better with the blue, but then if I'm at night and I don't have that natural light anymore, I need to switch to the pink and vice versa. So it just kind of depends on what your background fabric is, but those are the two colors that I use the most when I'm doing this. And and the white I have not used yet on the long arm because I just haven't had a quilt with a dark enough background to use that because otherwise you won't see it on the background at all with that. 
So what you're gonna do when you quilt this, and again, you can see this as well, really detailed for your home sewing machine, is you're going to start off and you're just going to follow your curves. And then if you ever feel the need to kind of stop and see where you're going next, you wanna do it at a point. And then you're just gonna bounce smoothly around those uh, feathers. And you just wanna go slow, but not so slow that you feel like you're being jerky. Like I was watching my daughter do handwriting today and I was trying to get her to slow down so that she would be neater, but then she got so slow that it was just super jerky. And that's what you don't want. You want it to be a nice smooth enough curve and a nice smooth smooth enough bump around for those feathers to at a decent enough speed to where you can do it and have it look nice, but not so fast that it gets sloppy and not so slow that it gets bumpy and chunky and things like that. But you're just gonna do that going all the way across. Then you're gonna roll your quilt, advance it to the next section, and you're gonna repeat with the lining things up, but there's a little bit different. There are registration marks on the top of that stencil as well. And and so you wanna make sure that is matching with the registration that was marked from the bottom below that. And for this stencil in particular, they're different for each one, but for this one, they kind of are staggered a little bit. So that way you're not gonna be like right on top. Like you might have some swirls here on one and some swirls here on the other. And that's great because if you make a mistake, it's not super obvious because it was perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh shoot, that one didn't do so well. It's, you know, it's staggered all over the place so it's harder to tell and so as long as you're careful and you line that up and I always what I do is I'll put it up there and then I kind of peel that stencil back a little bit and make sure that I'm not going to be overlapping anything that I've already stitched and I also use those registration marks to make sure that I'm staying nice and even with the piecing so if it is in a certain spot on one square I want it to be in a certain spot on the coordinating square at the same height on the other side that we the design is going straight across. Again, I really love this stencil. It's super fun to use. It is very easy to work on. You just have to think in your brain, okay, now I'm doing some swirls and now I'm doing some feathers and bump around. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let it run for just a second so you guys can kind of see some more of that quilting and just see it happen. And But it really is super simple and I'll show you some final photos of the quilt because I just love how this stencil looks. I would never ever in a million years be able to create this design on my own freehand, but I can make it look fabulous. And I actually had someone ask, is this a machine that did it uh, when I shared photos of it on Instagram? And it's like, no, it is, it is hand guided. I did it. I never would have been able to do it this well if I didn't have this stencil. So I love it. And I think you guys should check out this stencil too. And again, if you are doing this on your home sewing machine, we'll have a link in the video description down below where you can and see how we did it there because it is super simple on both uh, your machine and your, your domestic mach machine and your long arm. Well, thanks so much for following along. Again, we are going to show you in real time where I'm giving you the tips as I'm actually sewing it in the future, but this one was, it was, it was not a good day when I was filming this. And so I just turned the GoPro on. I was like, I will do a voiceover later. So I hope you enjoy this and until next time, happy quilting.